I was going to call this topic uh, music concert, time travel, and a bit of forecasting. But I think experience security in trend sounds better. And you'll find out why. OK, you can click that. OK. So I was going to begin by singing John Lennon's Imagine. But you're clearly an Indian guy belting out John Lennon is not the, what you're here for. But imagine if there was a world where there was no pain, no suffering, no illness, no diseases. Well, clearly, that's, we're not there yet. So let's imagine the next best thing, which is a world of health where the patient is at the middle of that uh, center of the universe. And all the associated entities, specialists and GPs and clinics and hospitals are exchanging information seamlessly. They're talking to each other. The information is transferred securely. And everything pretty much happens automatically. I guess each and every one of us in this room has imagined a solution like that, is working on a project like that, uh, which is why we are sitting here ideating about what we can do to sort of achieve that, that, that dream. I know we did back in 2010 when uh, we started implementing cloud-based paperless medical practices. Uh, but instead of going back to 2010, I'd like to do a bit of time travel and go back a thousand years and talk about something that I came across a couple of years back that sort of really resonated with me and, and, and made me realize that something that was built so far back still stands the test of time. And a lot of businesses today, because we're all talking about entrepreneurs and starting businesses, how we can structure our business and learn from something like this, which still, and to a lot of, uh, to, in respect how we run our business today, uh, can, can work well. This, for those of you who might not know, is, is a step well. In fact, it is the, the largest step well in the world. It's in the middle of a desert, and it's been built for one single purpose, to be able to provide water to its people all through the year. It's a massive structure. Uh, the sheer size of the thing is, in, is incredible, and it's a 1,000 years old. And I'll, I'll, I'll very quickly go into why this is relevant to a business even today. You know, what are the lessons for a business? You know, it starts with a very wide catchment area for a business, a lot of ideas, and how we, over time, can hone it down and focus into what we want to offer as our main solution. It's got 3,500 steps, many different ways, just to walk down to the water. There's no pulling off buckets and getting a bell out of the oil pump. It's 13 floors deep. This thing is huge. Uh, the solution is longevity. You know, you can get water at any time of the year. It's got perfect geometry. Three sides, 3,500 steps. The steps are lined perfectly. For someone to make this 1,000 years back and still stand strong is incredible. It has got longevity. And of course, it serves the single purpose, which is the solution that no matter how much it rains or how little it rains, you can always just get to the water. But let's come back to 2014 and understand the landscape that we are working in today, where we are designing solutions for. We all know of the boomers, the X's and the Y's, and you know when you were born, you are classified as an X or a Y or whatever it might be. But there is a connected generation. And these are people who are on LinkedIn and Twitter and Facebook and all the social media. So much so that it cuts across all age groups. And not just that, patients are now jumping onto websites like Yelp and other such websites and looking at which clinics should I go to? Are they online? Do they have a profile? Who are the doctors there? What profiles have they got? You know, this one says, I obviously jumped on Yelp, had a five star rating, so I booked an appointment. That's how patients are finding practices these days. So how is that relevant to the, the step well and to designing businesses or, or, or solutions now? Well, the medical practitioners are Gen C. The patients are Gen C, which means that if we are designing solutions today, not only are we making it for the future, but we also have to make sure that the people who are the boomers and the Xs and the Ys are able to use that technology. So we can't just say, let's make this fancy mobile app. By the way, uh, great app. I think a lot of what you said is resonating here as well. So I love what you said. But we can't design something incredibly amazing and just expect that everybody will just use it. It has to be adaptable to the people of right now as well. At the same time, if a patient wants to jump on a website and make a booking at 10 o'clock in the night, well, they will do it for a practice that offers that functionality. And the guys who don't, they have to find a way to do it. So just like the step well, which is relevant even today, where you can still use it and get the water, we have to make solutions that can be used by people today 
and for the years to come. Which brings us back to us. I believe that specialists and GPs are a micro business. You know, a server, a few laptops, a couple of printers, that's about it, that's their business. It's a micro business in terms of size. But their functionality is medium enterprise. Backup, disaster recovery, security, enterprise grade, mobility, e-health, telehealth. These are medium enterprise solutions. And when we began in 2010, at that time, there was no single business that was offering medium enterprise solutions to a micro enterprise market. We were that company which began with that. And it all began with a very simple idea. You know, my wife, she's an endocrinologist. She was setting up a practice in 2010, and she said, like all wives expect, I want everything. You know, secure, virtual, paperless, all of that. And it should just work automatically. So, you know, this, this standard stuff, you know, where should my server be? I've got a Mac like every doctor does. Uh, you know, Medicare, downloading of results, all those sort of things. And it just has to work. Well, fortunately for her, I could understand all those problems, listen to all those questions, and find the technical solution for that problem. Unfortunately for the IT companies I was speaking with at the time, the question they were asking you were completely trivial. I mean, how can you ask a doctor what size server do you want, or which antivirus software do you prefer? Uh, or, you know, we don't do Medicare because it's not our expertise. Where would that doctor go? So we then set up that business where we sit on the side of the doctor and understand all those questions and concerns about how they would like to set up their practice. And then we go about and find those solutions, put them together, build the practice for them, and then give them the medical practice and going, this is your practice. And not just that, then we go and support it, manage it, maintain it, and run it for them from a technology point of view. And of course, security is important. I'm obsessed about security. For those who have spoken with me, they know I can, that's the only thing I talk about. <laughs> uh, clinical data has to be secure at all times. And remember, let's not forget that most cyber attacks are done by, not by bored college kids, but by people who are experts in that field. You know, new privacy guidelines are coming out from 12th of March, next month. Uh, and there's a requirement to prove that, you know, sufficient measures are in place. What are those sufficient measures? Are the doctors even aware of it? Are there different respective colleges educating them and telling them that these are, this is what you're meant to be doing to secure your practice? I don't think enough is being done. Technology has changed. Firewalls are not a security device anymore, or not enough. It's just a barrier with holes in it. And let's not forget the mobile devices. You know, we are now extending the internet inside a clinical practice. With no security on it, you're pretty much making your entire practice vulnerable. So no matter what security you've got on your network, if that's already in there, it's already unsecured. Which brings us back to the stepped well. And so what is our stepped well? Well, yes, we have the wide catchment of ideas and the three and a half thousand steps, which is where we offer cloud-based medical practices or on-premise solutions, or depending on what we design with the doctor, we build that solution for them. We have the 13 levels of relationships, or well, not 13, but you know, with, with clinical software guys and e-health vendors and uh, e-messaging vendors and uh, secure imaging solution providers, which we put together and then provide that solution to our customers. We have longevity with a 24-7 national support system in place for our doc, for our clients backup, disaster recovery, business continuity, all of that is delivered to them. And of course, we have taken technology completely out of the conversation. There's, there's no technical conversation with our doctors at any time. It's purely about how would you like to run your practice. And of course, we have to talk about security. We wrap our solution in some really cool security. I mean, this thing has been, uh, is being used by the guys who make the stealth bomber. The guys are sitting in their office now designing the next level of security. It's being presented at the White House in the eHealth Summit. It's being trialed by the Homeland Security guys. Uh, it's won the Global Security Challenge. They've gone public this year. They won a $2 million grant from Commercialization Australia. Out of the $10 million which was approved that year, these guys got 20% of it. They won, you know, they, it's being trialed by the Center for Health Innovation in Melbourne, who we are working with on other projects. So yeah, it is some really cool security, and we implement that in every single practice we implement. Which brings us to where are the opportunities for us, or for guys like us you know, who are working on new models. This is a snapshot of the electronic medical records adoption uh, across the US, Australia, and Europe. 0.77 being the highest, 
And as you can see, and as expected, the, the US is obviously ahead in terms of how many entities or parts of health are integrated into electronic medical records. We are obviously a little further back. But what that means is that we have some significant opportunities to design and develop solutions in that space. So whether it's you know, back systems or mobile health or secure messaging or anything which can connect into those solutions because what's already in the US is coming here very quickly. So there's opportunities in all those sort of areas for all of us to work in. PricewaterhouseCoopers Health Research Institute released a study last year about things people are getting out of hospitals. More care will be provided through non-traditional channels. We're talking mobility, e-health, su smaller super clinics. So again, if you're looking at thinking about what solution should I be working in, those are the kind of spaces to work in, which is where the growth is coming. In terms of five sort of key trends that we can see uh, coming in, uh, in Australia, which is already here. The first big one is mobile health. We've already seen the, the, uh, the mobility conference in, in Barcelona. You know, Samsung has a new Galaxy S5, which can track your heart rate. You know, people have got Fitbits telling you, you know, how long you slept for or how many steps you run. Uh, patients have got, got their blood sugar results on their mobile phones uploading to cloud servers. And it's not long before there's, there will be an expectation that my doctor should be able to pick up all that information, analyze that, and then give me a call or somehow connect with me and provide me treatment, or what should I be doing? So mobility is, is, is huge. That is, the, that is absolutely incredibly big. Personal health records, not just PCAHR, which is obviously going to change. I know Heiser has some, done, some, uh, done a report on that about making it an opt-out system and not feel free to use it if you like it. Uh, but things like you know, providing uh, online portals where I can upload my x-rays, my scans, my images. So if I'm, in Australia, if I'm on a holiday in the US and the doctor there wants to see what my last x-ray was, yep, jump on and have a look. So solutions in that space are, are going to be big. Telehealth is the next big one. You know, there's a forecast of 18.5% growth year over year till 2018. And we are a perfect fit for telehealth. Country with a uh, first world country, large rural population, country of distances, it's, it's a no-brainer that anything we can do in telehealth to fit into that solution set is a perfect fit. The electronic health record vendors, there's 75 vendors in Australia with EHR systems. That is ridiculous. I mean, that's far too many. There's going to be a consolidation of these EHR systems. And again, if, you're, if we can build solutions that can plug into cloud-hosted EHR systems or anything that can plug in with that or utilize values on that, that's another big market to be in. And last but not the least, the analytics of the system. As more practices go online, go paperless, go on the cloud, there's mobile health pulling data into the practices, there's big data happening. And again, using that data and mining it for research, for treatment, for care, is going to be huge. So any solutions in data analytics or analyzing those volumes of data. You know, you know there's somebody in a group who's, who's working on how we can reduce readmission of patients within 30 days of them being discharged from hospitals. Now, that's massive amount of data coming out, looking at how, what medication was done, how long they would took to recover, all that sort of information. So again, anything in that space is going to be huge. I guess in, in, in closing, you know, there, there's a lot we can talk about, but the key points that if I, if I want you to take home today is that first, as entrepreneurs or health entrepreneurs, do not get caught in the over-design to perfection. You know, we start working on a solution, and we learned that very quickly early on in our business, that we began with cloud solution, and we wanted to make the best possible cloud solution, and we also wanted to offer telehealth and medical transcription and backup and disaster recovery and the whole lot. And we spent a few months just to build that, the entire solution, and we went to the first doctor, the guy said, I only want cloud services. Well, what about the other stuff? Well, no, I already have that. Okay, so we spent three and a half months making it, but that guy didn't want it. So if you have an idea, get the solution to the market, launch it, let people start using it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but at least the market will tell you how good it is, what is working, what's not working, so you can go back and fix it, then move on to the next one. The second one, I can't harp enough on this, you know, engage with industry bodies like the HISA, the Victoria Health Network, Center for Health Innovation, MSIA, or whichever bodies are there in your area of speciality. Because these are made up of experts, market leaders, professionals who spend years in the industry. They're engaging with the government and policies. So for us who are trying to develop new solutions in that space, 
these are the people who, as members, we can bounce ideas off and say, look, hey, I'm working on this. Do you think it makes sense? Or who is going to use this? Or is this relevant? Or can you give me some ideas on will, will this work or that won't work? That will help us in fine tuning and making sure that whatever we are working on is actually going to be used by the market. And last but not the least, we'll go back to the, uh, the, the whole imagination slide, that let's not forget that it is always, always about the patient, no matter how good our system is. The patient is at the center of the universe. Thank you.